So for these videos, I get to take home drum machines and synthesizers all the time to my house to kind of get familiar with. And it's really fascinating to me that my 18-month-year-old daughter is attracted to drum machines more so than any other instrument she's ever been exposed to. And not just attracted to, but understands the rhythm. She loves to dance to them, and she understands the response of hitting a note and getting it to play. And so she, she's just enthralled by it, and it just moves her. And I think it speaks to the power, the primal power, of drums and rhythm in our brains. And today we're going to be looking at five really amazing options for under $500 to get more rhythm and drums in your life. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Zach Marr from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. This is our Alamo Sound Lab channel where we talk about all things music technology related. And today we're looking at the top five hardware drum machines for under $500 for 2020. And to me, this is a really exciting topic because I believe, like I said earlier, Rhythm and drums are so primal to so many people's first experience with music. I know for me growing up, I had a digital piano that had drum machines on it. And the thing that really engaged me with music creation was the multi-track recorder and the drum sounds. I would just layer drum sound after drum sound and make these kind of crazy cacophonous beats and just go at it over and over again. And to me, that was genius. I thought I was a genius. But... It probably sounded terrible, but that was my ex first experience with making music was making drum machine patterns. And I think for many people, that's the thing we understand first before harmony, melody. And I think a lot of musicians, you know, you go on your different paths. You go play piano, you go play guitar, violin, bass, whatever. And, you know, there's some frustrations when you're playing at home, when you're just noodling around or writing and you don't have a drummer with you and you're maybe using a metronome or you're using some, some uh, pre-recorded drums, it's not the same thing as having control over a drum pattern and being able to express yourself musically via drums and rhythm. And so I think there's never been a better time to get a drum machine. There's a lot of great options on the market. There's digital options. There's um, also great analog options at really affordable price points. And so we're going to be looking at those today and kind of giving our opinion of the top five. And again, it's hardware. There's a lot of software options out there, but we're specifically looking at hardware because hardware is something that's its own interface. It's something that's its own instrument. You can kind of engage with it a little more tactily than you can with software, uh, software drum machines. So that's what we're focused on. So let's start with number five. So number five is this one right here. It's the Korg um, Dr Volca Drums. And it is, oh, sorry, not vocal drums, Korg Volca Beats. There's also a Korg Volca Drums. And this is a very inexpensive $150 analog drum machine. And this is part of kind of Korg's uh, Volca series that came out of nowhere and kind of took the world by surprise with creating really inexpensive analog little modules. There's vocal keys, vocal sample, whole bunch of, I think there's like 10, there's a ton of them. And it's really pretty powerful for being $150. It has some pretty great sounds in it. And it also has the sequencing from their Electribe drum machine series, which is kind of classic. And it's really a great option for if you just need a little inexpensive drum machine to kind of fiddle around with. It's, it's not the uh, most impressive in terms of like, complex tones or really... Uh, something that you would want to record. I mean, it'd be kind of a lo-fi, kind of DIY-sounding uh, song if you used it in a kind of music production setting. It's cool, good for, for some settings, but it's not really like a... doesn't have a particularly memorable analog sound. But that said, it's got, it, is, it is kind of a full-functioning 
drum machine for 150 bucks. It's got also like a stutter function and it's got some effects in it. Um, I believe it has, just looking at it, um, you can adjust the decay, the pitch, you can skip steps and it's got this little stutter function that's, that's really cool. Um, it's a mono out, so pretty simple, but those vocals are a lot of fun, easy to use. Let's take a listen real quick so you get a sense of what it sounds like.
So my favorite sound in the Volca Beats is the bass drum. It's really powerful for the size of this unit. You would never really guess that it would be that loud based on the size if you're just looking at it. So I hope that gave you a sense of kind of the different tonal qualities in the vocal beats. And one interesting kind of side note is that Korg's first instrument was actually a drum machine. So they know what they're doing. So number four, we're gonna go into the Roland TR-08. The TR-08 is Roland's digital emulation of their classic TR-808, one of the most iconic drum machines of all time. And it is truly a very accurate replica. Even though it's a digital emulation, they use this technology called ACB technology that emulates even the circuitry noise that you get in an 808 and the kind of phantom notes that you get when you turn the volume all the way down on different sounds, you still hear them. And the, the TR-08, even though it's digital and they could eliminate all that, it emulates the circuitry behavior and the circuitry noise to kind of give you that experience of being in front of an 808. So it's really interesting in that way. Um, it also is faithful and it's um, recreation of the interface and recreation of the kind of way the programming drum, drum sounds works, which is a pro and a con. It's a pro in that you get to experience what being in front of an 808 is like. It's a con in that it's not always the most fun experience. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get over that, it is fun to play with and it sounds great. Other great things about it are that it's got a stereo out which most of these, all these drum machines do not have a stereo out. This is the only one that does because it's digital, it's easier to do. And it also has some built-in effects and it is really compact. It's got a little built-in speaker too, which is fun, makes it kind of, and you can power it with batteries so you can kind of take it around and kind of play and be self-contained, which is something I love about the Boutique series. So that's kind of where it comes in for me. It's the it's a very awesome little unit and a lot of fun. Let's take a listen to how it sounds.
So you probably recognize that many of the sounds in the TR-08. It is all over music history in hip hop and pop, all sorts of genres. This instrument, the sounds in this instrument have been used so many times. It's, it's, it's kind of mind boggling how often it shows up. And one last thing I would say about the TR-08, it is a digital drum machine. And really, digital instruments play better in a mix with other, other digital instruments. And it's something to keep in mind if you have a bunch of digital synths. The TR-08 is going to sound nicer next to them. You can use, if you're mixing, and you can hide that in a mixing and mastering. But if you're just kind of for your own personal use, you're going to hear a little bit of a clash using a TR-08 with other analog machines and vice versa, using a TR-08 if you use it with digital machines, it's going to sound a little smoother. So just a side note on that. So number three is the drum brute, the Archuria drum brute. And I, you know, I've, as I put this list together, I'm, I'm kind of scratching my head because the Archuria drum brute is more expensive than its little brother, the drum brute impact. And so the question is, why would you ever get the drum brute, the original drum brute over the drum brute impact? But there are a few things that work in its favor. So the Archuria drum brute was, I think, Archuria's first uh, hardware analog drum machine that they put out. And it's really amazing. It's very powerful. It, it's kind of mind-boggling. Archuria's analog synths that they put out are some of the best. And it, they're, they're new machines. They're not looking back to the history or the past. They're just things they created out of kind of thin air and, and in my opinion are, are going to go on to be classics for what they offer. And what's really interesting is this one has 17 sounds in it and it also has a, a filter um, that's a resonance filter. It, it's, it's really powerful and it's more of the tonal, the drum brute impact is a lot more aggressive. So it's an aggressive drum machine, a little dirtier sounding. The original drum brute is really smooth and kind of, if you're looking for a smoother analog electronica kind of drum machine, this thing is really perfect and would, I would recommend it over the drum brute impact. They're really pretty two different beasts um, and you'll kind of hear it when we play through both of them, but the drum, and the drum brute is really powerful and sounds great and it's just different than the drum brute impact and I just happen to like the drum impact more. It's just a personal preference. So, kind of qualifying it in the list. Even though it's more expensive, it might be right for you because if you have a different tonal palette than I do, this might be a better option and you'll kind of be able to hear it and choose for yourself. But very full featured uh, kind of drum machine. It's got all sorts of, it's got a little repeating function. It's really great performance instrument as well. Um, Archeria really didn't hold back on any feature when they built these. And even down to the little details of the wood paneling, it feels and looks amazing. It's really high build quality. And it really I don't know how Archuria makes money building these things because they're so well featured and so kind of substantial. You know, I guess it's all the money they're making from selling VST software. <laughs> That's my opinion. I think these things are underpriced for what they offer. But, uh, and there's some other videos if you want to see more details about the specs. There's a lot of videos going in depth, but I think this is just such a great value. And it comes in at number three for us, so let's take a listen.
So I hope you can hear how smooth the drum brute sounds. It's a really nice kind of palette of drum sounds and really great for making smoother electronic music. And I really view it as complementary to the drum brute impact, not necessarily as a better or worse. They're different beasts, like I said earlier. One, the impact is way more aggressive and compact, really. And the drum brute has a feature where you can send out, it has 12 audio outs, and you see you can pan the instruments a lot more, um, a lot, you have a lot more options when panning and recording than you do in the impact, which only has four. So just two different instruments, really, if I had to choose one, I'd choose both, because they're both so much fun and different. So that's kind of all I have to say about the drum brute, so let's move on to number two. And number two is the RD8 by Behringer. And it is another TR-808 clone, but it's an all analog clone. And that is really insane for the price point that it comes in at, which is, a, I think, roughly like four or $500, where a TR-808, an analog TR-808 runs you five grand. This is significantly less expensive, and it's all analog. And what's really great about it as well is it they did not follow the exact... Um, kind of step recording that you found in the original 808. It's a lot more friendly for kind of performance live settings, and it's just in general a little easier to use than a original 808. In addition to that, it has a high pass filter, it has uh, um, attack and sustain, wave designer, it also has swing probability and flam as kind of like effects, Probability kind of has not, n notes drop in and out at random. Um, swing is just moves the tempo kind of into swingy pace. And flam is this kind of odd effect. Kind of cool, but again, not found in the original 808. So not only does it have all the sounds of an 808, but it also has additional effects. And it's easier to program. And it's just really, really powerful. In addition, like the original 808, it has voice outs for each of the individual um, voices and sounds in the instrument you can send individual line outs and their quarter inch outs so you can get you can pan it in your mix so really great as a recording um, kind of studio piece as well and you know people ask what's the difference between the rd8 and the tr08 besides them being um, and one being an analog replication and a, the other being a digital emulation the uh in my opinion, the TR-08 actually sounds closer to an 808 um, than the RD-8. The RD-8 sounds really close as well, but if, if you're talking about what's a more accurate picture of an 808, I would have to say the TR-08 is probably more accurate, but the RD-8 is pretty damn close, and it's also got characteristics that make it its own instrument besides just being an emulation of an 808, and it's an analog instrument, which is desirable if you're using other analog instruments. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Let's take a listen and you can kind of decide for yourself what you think.
So you can kind of hear the 808 again. If you want to compare, you can go back and listen to the TR-08 and how it sounds versus the 808. Both great choices for a studio or for a live setting and also very affordable. Really great work from Behringer. I'm particularly excited about the 909 clone that they have coming out. There is really no option currently if you like the 909, another classic Roland uh, drum machine. There's no option today to get the 909 sound except from software. Roland did have a TR-09, but it was discontinued a few years back. So I'm really excited about the 909. There's also a couple other clones, I think, on the works. So maybe next year will be the, nine, the year of the 909. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't in production. When we made this video, it probably would have been in the video. So one last note before we go into what my number one choice is. There's a few instruments that didn't make it here, and I wanted to just kind of quickly reference them. Two of them that I think people will probably comment about. One is the new TR-606 by Roland, which is a replica of the TR-606, another classic Roland drum machine. It's just not, we haven't got one yet, and I don't think many people in the US have been shipped any yet, and it's kind of pre, it's gonna be available during the holidays. You should definitely check it out. I think it, again, would have made it into this video if it had been in our hands. So check it out. I just, I don't know enough about it to put it in this video, and I don't even know if you'll be able to find it before the end of 2020. And then the other one I wanted to know was there's a Teenage Engineering little pocket uh, drum machine that's like 90 bucks, really inexpensive. And they make really cool kind of these inexpensive under, kind of like the Korg Volca, but, a very, but totally different. It's more of like a hybrid between a video game and an instrument. And I wanted to mention it. I didn't put it in this video because I don't know how practical it is for music making or even, they're a lot of fun, but in terms of, actually using it in any kind of music creation standpoint, you know, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I do think they're very cool. I'd recommend it as, as a cool kind of little thing. But again, I didn't put it in the list for that reason. And then, so let's all go on to number one. My number one pick for drum machines under $500 is the Drum Brute Impact. And it's not the most expensive option up here. I think it's 300 so it makes it the second least expensive option, and that's one of the reasons I have it so far up the list, is not only is it incredible value, but it's incredibly powerful. It is like the drum brute, and except it's a little stripped down, there's less voices, and it doesn't have the wood paneling, but it has a distortion chip, which allows you to get really aggressive in the signal path, and it is really fun. It's just incredibly fun. I like aggressive drums, and this thing is aggressive. Uh, and it has most of the features you find in the drum brute. It's just the tonally, it's a little more aggressive, and I think it's just a blast to play with. So for me, this is my, if I was, if, you know, if I had $500 to spend, I would probably get the drum brute impact more so than any of the other ones. And again, that's a personal choice. I think all these are great options. I just, for me, my, in my sonic taste, I really love the way the impact sounds, and it is, kind of its own thing. The, like I said about the drum brute, Archeria kind of invented these out of thin air and have kind of put their stamp on the drum machine world creating these two instruments and I think they've done a fantastic job. Again, I don't know how they're making money creating these. I, I, it's gotta be their software, which is great as well, but these are really awesome and in my opinion, future classics in the drum machine world. So let's take a listen and then we'll wrap up.
So I really get lost in the drum root impact. I don't know why exactly. It just works from a musical standpoint. It really inspires me. And particularly, I love the FM drum and the distortion effect in it. It's just so fun and aggressive, and it just really floats my boat. I think Archuria did a great job with the drum root and the drum root impact. I think they're potentially future analog drum machine classics. They really have no reference point in history. They're not recreating something. They kind of did their own thing. And I don't know how they made money doing it because these are incredibly full featured and powerful for the price points that they come at. What I'd like to kind of conclude saying is that this is our top five list. This is not necessarily your top five list. We'd love to hear your thoughts below what you think the order should be, or what instruments did we leave off? Which one should we consider? We'd love to hear what we should evaluate. We'd love to evaluate drum machines and kind of hear what's new on the market. We're super excited about the Behringer 09, 909 clone and the Roland TR06. You'll see videos on those in the future from us. And make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss them when they come out. If you have any other questions, feedback, want to talk to us, find us at alamusic.com. You can send us an email, chat with us, give us a call. We'd love to discuss with you further. Thanks for watching today.